Good morning. How are you this morning? Okay, today <clears throat> I would like to talk about, about this uh, character. So you have no idea what this means. In the Chinese uh, philosophy or ethics, particularly in Confucianism, this world is uh, the most important. There is some special research institute just studying the research on this character. So, what does this mean except our Korean minister? It is not wisdom hint, it is not compassion. It's composed of the two parts. This part means the word, speech. This part means uh, fulfill or accomplish, the like keeping promise, something like that. Mike, can you guess what this means? World or speech, this is uh, accomplish or fulfill. So this composite word. This letter means what did you say? Word or world? Word, speech. Word. Speech accomplishment? Yeah, this part. Mm. Word. This word means dedication or commitment or sincerity. There's no exactly translated English word. So the definition of this word, it's a, we casually translate this as a dedication. According to our founding master's definition of this, uh, one of the four articles to progress, to progress our uh, spiritual practice. This means an unremitting state of mind, which is the motivating force that will achieve the objective when we try to accomplish anything. Make sense? Unremitting state of mind, the ceaselessness of the mind. In this world, what can be the most dedicated, committed, or sincere? Something that keeps a promise, always. Mm. Or not, generally speaking. I think uh, the most dedicated, uh, sincere, committed thing is the nature, the universe itself, heaven and earth. Spring has come. They know the flowers uh, start to bloom. You see a lot of cherry blossoms over there. They keep the promise. Or the flow of the water, change of the season, the beating of your heart. It's a really ceaseless and constantly keep its promise. The mean, the most important uh, Chinese classic, uh, along with the analect, the words of uh, uh, Confucius. Uh, the being of the mean start uh, with this sentence. Uh, this one, dedication is the way of the heaven and earth, the way of the universe, actualizing this, actualizing, enacting this dedication or commitment is the way of humans. Everybody would like to be successful in some area, whether it's uh, in our career or, or in our spiritual practice. What can be the motivating force, motive power that enable us to become successful? to achieve that, achieve our objective. 
For example, this microphone is uh, powered by electricity. This iPhone is powered by battery. Then what is the motive power, motivating force that make us successful in any area? There are many elements uh, we can say, but according to our fund and master's word, uh, this work is the motive power motivating force, dedication, commitment, uh, diligence, sincerity. This word uh, encompass all of those uh, meanings. We all know the children, the study of the uh, race competition between hare and tortoise. Hare is very quick, so they joined in the racing competition to the top of the mountain. After some while, the rabbit, the hare, could easily surpass the tortoise. The, the turtle was almost invisible, so he took a nap, and then eventually the tortoise win the race. I think it's a very, very profound story. In whatever area, when you try to accomplish anything, whether it's uh, in whatever area, uh, in our workplace, in our spiritual practice. There are so many mountaineers uh, who know how to climb to the top of the Mount Everest in Himalayas, but there are just a few who actually stood on the top of the mountain Everest. Without this thing, whether it's uh, reaching to the top of the mountain or audible things, uh, we cannot uh, fulfill, accomplish that. Especially attaining Buddhahood or enlightenment is not just uh, climbing to the top of the mountain, Cascade. It's like a mountain which is very, very high. We may encounter lots of steep area, lots of hindrance and obstacles. We tend to, we are tempted to become lazy, take rest too often in our journey to achieve anything. Then. Let's remember this word, dedication or diligence or commitment. One of my teachers, uh, right now the minister is in charge of the One Buddhism Centennial. When he was a prime minister, when he was in his mid-twenties, uh, unlike his other classmates, unlike other novices, he was, not, he was not motivated to practice a spiritual practice. He intellectually knew spiritual practice or attaining enlightenment is very, very important. But for some unknown, unknown reason, kind of a courage, passion, zeal could not arise in his mind. He was very, very disappointed. He was very deeply felt sorry for himself. So when during the summertime, he visited, uh, he spent the time with our third head Dharma master. When he had the chance to walk with him after morning meditation, he very candidly said that he's a, uh, he's a problem, he's a state of a mind. After listening to the minister's word, our third head Dharma master replied, when a person or practitioner, when he walk 
towards his destination. If he falls down ten times, but get up eleven times, he will finally make it. But a practitioner or whatever person, if he falls down once, but could not get up, is the person who cannot make it. That simple word they really, really encouraged him. Have you ever seen the hen sitting on eggs to incubate the eggs? It's a rural area. So Mike, have you seen hen sitting on eggs? When the hen becomes very hungry, She has to leave the eggs. So he pick up something and then immediately comes back to the eggs and uh, continue to sit on the eggs in order not to lose the warmth of the eggs. When you try to something, when you try to achieve something, sometimes we need a rest. Uh, sometimes uh, we can be disappointed uh, at the result, and we need some rest. We can take a rest. But just like the hands, we have to go back, not to lose the warmth in order for the eggs to be incubated. Otherwise, the eggs uh, cannot be transformed into pretty chicken. When my sister was uh, uh, married, for some unknown medical reason, she could not get pregnant for 10 years. And uh, finally, she decided uh, her mind to try the artificial insemination. Uh, but that also did not work pretty well. And one day, she received a phone call from the medical doctor this time, you made it. And the artificial fertilization became very, very successful. But she was very, very doubtful of the words of the doctor because she already failed several times before. But after three or four months, her belly started to expand. Exactly after 10 months, she gave a birth, uh, a twin, a boy and girl. Our spiritual practice, or many, many kinds of our endeavor, it's a, just like a drinking water. It's a very, very boring, drinking the same water again and again. It's just like a sitting. It is not like a drinking water today, tomorrow we try lemonade, the day after tomorrow we can try coffee. It's not like that. It's the same sitting again and again, feeling the breath. So many times we feel there is no progress at all. Just like my sister's expectation. But just like in my sister's belly, the baby was conceived and started to grow, even though it, is, it was invisible. If we continue to practice the study dharma, then progress is always there. I usually compare that with a daybreak in the middle of the night from 3 to 4 o'clock, from 4 to 5 of It is still very, very dark, but within five minutes, these days, uh, probably from 6.30 uh, to 6.05, uh, the whole world uh, becomes very, very bright. But without the process of uh, from 3 to 4 o'clock, from 4 to 5, uh, the world cannot become bright. So being patient is very, very important uh, to get the good result. When I <clears throat> was a Christian, when I was in regular college, when I read the Bible, one of the passages 
that really caught my mind was, uh, I encountered this type of a passage a lot. In due time, in God's time, in due season, we need to learn to wait the proper time. Not in our time, in God's time. One, one passage says, the vision is for an appointed time, though it tarries, wait earnestly for it, for it will come to pass. It's a human's nature to hurry it up, to get something within a very short period of time, especially it is a contemporary uh, culture itself, uh, uh, transform our mindset in that way. But just like the Charles Darwin said, uh, nature does not leap. Being hurried, hurrying ourselves to get something as soon as possible, it's the, against the law of the nature, against the Dharma. When our third head Dharma master was young, when he was in his uh, 20s, uh, he was highly motivated to attain enlightenment. And uh, <clears throat> he poured a lot of energy, zeal, and to continue uh, to walk on the spiritual path. But despite his effort, he could not see the result quickly. After several years, he started to join the one Buddhist group uh, at the time, the Korean that Sangha was uh, learned by our founding master. He became very hasty. And because of his hasty mind in his daily life, he could not keep his composure. He was not comfortable in whatever he did. One day, he read the Buddhist scripture and discovered the passage that the Shakamari Buddha who was born in India um, 2,500 years ago. In order for him to attain supreme enlightenment in that, at, that life, uh, he was, at that life, he was born as a prince uh, and uh, left the palace uh, to search for truth. In his uh, previous life, uh, he practiced uh, for 500 uh, lives. He accumulated a lot of merits and did continued to practice. In that particular life, he harvested the fruit. So he thought to himself, compelled to Shakamani Buddha, he is not a person of highest capacity. So, wow, Shitarta. Shakamani Buddha practiced for 500 lives. I better practice for 5 million lives to attain supreme enlightenment. He changed his mind. His changed mindset made him very, very comfortable. And his practice becomes more efficient and speedy. So the point is, Hasty mind in whatever area, particularly in sitting meditation, is a very, very big obstacle, very, very big obstacle for us uh, to achieve something. So the Venerable Tessan said, uh, it does not matter what you practice, whether it's a chanting practice or a sitting meditation or prayer, pick up one or two that fits yourself and continue practice that. In all the days in Korea, during the Joseon dynasty, in order for a person to become a high-ranking government official, they have to join and pass through high-level state examination. In order to take the examination, especially the people who are living in the southern part of the Korea, have to walk to the Seoul, Korea, which is located in the middle of the uh, Korean peninsula, 
it takes several months to take the examination. One young man tried that examination more than seven times and he failed continuously. He felt very sorry to himself and uh, felt very sorry with his wife as well as the children. One day he was very despondent uh, and uh, frustrated. He, on that rainy day, he happened to stand under the eaves of his uh, house. The water he saw the water dripped on the top of the stone. Since the water dripped on the same spot again and again, the water drop made a deep depression. Think about that. One water drop. Can he wear the stone quickly? But he constantly drops on the same spot. He made a very deep hole or depression. He learned from that lesson from the water drop and the tried again. And he became the young Yijang. He's a kind of a prime minister in older days. The characteristic of a successful person is a diligence, tenacity, passion, and zeal. And in many, one of the serious problem of the impoverished countries is the people's mentality characterized by the laziness. You can explain that in, from various perspectives. But when we read our one Buddhist scripture, whether it is the timeless Zen chapter or sitting meditation chapter, we can see this type of expression for a long time. For example, the following 10 merits of sitting meditation will produce the previous sentence, ore ore means for a long time, for a lengthy time. Or in the timeless Zen meditation, through continuous practice, through continuous practice, after long training. There is not super skillful method. It's just doing something again and again until we achieve that without giving up. <clears throat> At the end of the year, we hear uh, the music, the Beethoven's, uh, the Ninth Symphony, the, the particularly the Fourth Movement, uh, the Ode to Joy. Have you ever heard uh, Beethoven is a music prodigy? But do you know how many years he composed that Ninth Symphony? It's the last symphony. So how many years he poured to compose that music? I do not know in what age Beethoven passed away. But the article that I read said, he composed for that music for his whole life. Particularly the fourth movement. When Beethoven was young, when he was 20, he read the Schiller's, the German philosopher Schiller's poem, Ode to Joy. He was very much touched by that poem. So he decided his mind based on that. I will compose some symphony. It is the ninth symphony. For his whole life, he thought about the composer. In many areas, for example, Goethe, I'm not sure it's the proper pronunciation, the author of Faust, German philosopher, Goethe. Do you know how many years he spent to Write the Faust. He finished that work when he was very, very old, probably in his mid 60s. Just like Beethoven, he wrote that 
play or novel for his whole life. He finished that. He polished the sentence, corrected again and again for his whole life. That kind of uh, our third the head dharma master said that. that kind of discipline, sincerity, dedication, tenacity, commitment, make enable us uh, to achieve uh, something. Let me read uh, uh, our founding master's word. The founding master said that there are three difficulties facing religious order. One is the difficulty in understanding the absolute realm of Ilwan, to understand who we really are, enlightenment. Two is the difficulty in incorporating the truth of Ilwan into, into one's conduct, so that one will practice with one suchness in action and the rest. Three is the difficulty in teaching the truth of L1 concisely and clearly to the general public. Nevertheless, the most difficult task becomes easy if a practitioner firmly makes up one's mind and devotes oneself to attaining it. On the other hand, for those who are not willing to pursue it or who give up midway, even the easiest task becomes uh, difficult. 